Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel. And in the video today, we're looking at whether inhaling alcohol is bad for you. Just before we get started, I do want to say that this video is brought to you by Skillshare. The first 100 viewers to click the link in the description below will get a two month trial of Skillshare for free. Inhaling any substance, as long as the molecule is small enough, is one of the fastest ways to get it into your bloodstream. This is because the barrier between your blood and the outside environment is so easily penetrated. When you inhale air and all of its impurities, in this case the alcohol, the vapor easily crosses the capillary beds that reside in the small air sacs within your lungs called alveoli. Once inhaled, the oxygen and alcohol are in higher concentrations than in your blood. They naturally migrate across the alveoli membrane membrane, equalizing the concentration of those molecules on both sides of it. This process is called diffusion. The level of carbon dioxide within the blood is higher than the outside air, and as such it will also diffuse across the membrane to the environment. This entire process happens almost instantaneously. Any respecting medical student knows that there are a few ways you can get alcohol into your bloodstream. Compared to inhalation, though, they all require much more time. Drinking requires it to be broken down by your digestion system. Absorbing alcohol through mucous membranes, like placing alcohol drops in the eyes or alcohol enemas, require more time because the absorption rate is much slower than the diffusion within the lungs. With that out of the way, let's have a look at some of the advertised benefits of inhaled alcohol and some of the severe risks. First up, calorie reduction. There are four types of nutrients that have a measurable amount of calories. Alcohol is one of them. The other three are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. It doesn't matter if you drink the alcohol or you inhale it, the calories consumed will be proportional to the amount of alcohol taken in. The caloric saving here comes in the reduction of carbohydrates within the liquids, namely the sugars. The higher the alcohol content in the liquid you vaporize, the less this benefit is realized. Vaporizing beer, usually around 5% alcohol by volume, will give you greater savings compared to vodka, usually around 40% alcohol by volume. Next up, there's quicker removal from the body, which is claimed to help avoid hangovers. Normally, alcohol is removed from the body in three ways. Around 5% is expelled by your kidneys in your urine, about 5% is exhaled by your lungs in the process of diffusion. This is why breathalyzers are such a great way of determining blood alcohol levels. The remaining is chemically broken down by your liver into a acid. There has never been a human study that has focused on alcohol elimination times of different intake methods. There were, however, animal studies done in the 1970s showing ethanol elimination from inhalation was significantly faster compared to ingestion. The exact mechanism of this elimination compared to ingestion was not mentioned. However, by bypassing the liver and its ability to change alcohol to acetic acid, the inhaled alcohol has a much higher strength and its effects become much more potent. This might seem enticing to college fraternities, but it's tremendously overshadowed by the potential harmful consequences. Overdose, alcohol poisoning being the most deadly. Alcohol is a potent central nervous system depressant. If the level within the blood is high enough, it causes things like respiratory depression, seizures, and hypothermia. It can also cause the loss of your gag reflex. When combined with vomiting, it can lead to aspiration. And drowning in your own vomit on a stranger's bathroom floor isn't the noblest way to end your life. Speaking of this, bypassing the digestive system eliminates the body's natural overdose deterrent, vomiting. The methods currently used by people to vaporize alcohol make it extremely difficult to measure the exact amount inhaled. Even in sober conditions, the inevitable change in mental state also contributes to this difficulty. This rapid intoxication, combined with the problems of measuring the amount consumed, leads to a much greater risk of overdose. It is true there doesn't seem to have been any actual scientific studies looking at the adverse effects of inhaling alcohol, but based on the mechanism of ingestion, most medical professionals agree the potential for deadly consequences is rather considerable. Additional concerns about inhaling alcohol revolve around addiction. Most people who try this form of intoxication describe a rapid and much more intense reaction. This quick hit reinforces addictive effects. Inhaling alcohol also has the potential to damage the lining of your respiratory tract and your lungs. This can predispose you to a higher risk of lung infections like pneumonia. While the party-fueled vaporization and inhalation of alcohol is extremely dangerous, there are some real medical benefits when used appropriately by medical professionals. 
In 1954, doctors Aldo Lusada, Morten Goldsman, and Ruth Weil used this as a method for treating pulmonary edema resistant to all other forms of therapy. The fluid in the lungs associated with pulmonary edema contains blood elements that get churned into a froth by the act of breathing. This leaves foam-like bubbles that make it extremely difficult to diffuse oxygen through the capillary beds. By bubbling oxygen through a 50% ethyl alcohol solution, the frothy bubbles collapse, making it easier for the individuals to breathe. It's thought the alcohol alters the surface tension of the bubbles causing the collapse. The resulting sputum is also more liquid and much easier to expel from the lungs. Another well-accepted treatment using alcohol inhalation is the prevention of alcohol withdrawal post-surgery. As with any physically addictive substance, when you stop using, withdrawals occur. Known as alcohol withdrawal syndrome, or AWS, the symptoms can be deadly. In 1908, when hospitalization was uncommon, the mortality rate of AWS was around 37%. Currently, the mortality rate for patients in a hospital is around 6.6%. Since even those addicted to alcohol sometimes need surgery, doctors are left with the problem of preventing AWS while they're recovering. Medications known as benzodiazepines are commonly used. The intravenous infusion of ethanol is also sometimes administered. The inhalation of alcohol, though, is also becoming widely accepted, and some doctors, they even prefer it, claiming that it's easier to control than ethanol infusion. They also cite the added benefit of increased oxygen levels post-surgery because oxygen is bubbled through the alcohol. However, unlike with home use, where people are just trying to get drunk fast, whether used for the treatment of pulmonary edema or AWS, doctors constantly monitor the amount of alcohol inhaled. They also continually monitor the blood alcohol levels of the individual, keeping them in a range that is high enough to get the results they want, while low enough not to cause any unwanted problems. So, to sum it all up, if you choose to vaporize and inhale alcohol, it will get you drunk very quickly. You will, however, significantly increase your chance of a deadly overdose and potential alcohol addiction. So, as I said at the top of this video, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. It's a pleasure to welcome them back for another sponsorship on this channel. So, let me just talk about uh, a little bit of the official stuff about Skillshare before I get into some of my experiences using the platform. Basically, Skillshare is a learning community where there are 15,000 classes. They're in all sorts of topics from business to design and, well, loads and loads more. Like, you can go check it out if you're one of the first 100 people you get two months trial. So, go click on that and check out all of the courses that they have on offer. What I particularly like about Skillshare is that unlike um, other learning platforms on the internet, which will remain nameless, there are it's just with Skillshare one price and then it's basically a buffet of courses. So what this means is that when you want to learn something, like you need a new skill, you don't have to consider how much it's going to cost. It's all included in that one per monthly fee that you pay for Skillshare. All right, so now let me tell you about kind of a personal anecdote of me using Skillshare. So recently I bought a drone, one of those things that films things from the air. Basically this is for a project we're working on on this channel, which is currently under wraps, so uh, more in the future about that. But for now, basically I bought one of these and I need to know how to use it. Now, I've had these things before and I was kind of, you know, I'd get them out of the box and I'd get a bit excited and uh, this one, I don't know if, there we go, yeah, you guys can see that. This one, unfortunately, it, it died. And basically, I didn't want my new one to die, so I went on to, I initially I actually went to YouTube and I typed in like how to use, uh, it's a DJI Mavic drone, how to use that. But then I was like, wait, but I've got Skillshare. On Skillshare, there was like a 45 minute course on how to fly drones. And then after that, there was another video, which was kind of an advanced class by the same people that was an hour long. And I'm showing some clips of this now because it's just really professionally produced. It looks great. And it, honestly, it looks like something you pay for. And I think that's the thing with Skillshare. You're paying for something, but you're getting something more comprehensive. You're getting something better. And this, this, uh, this video class, it had 6,000 students. It's just, you know, you can see from the clips that it's, it's, it's more advanced. So it's Skillshare, the first 100 people to click the link in the description below will get two months of Skillshare for free. You can learn on your computer, mobile phone, tablet, wherever. So I would really encourage you, if you want to go learn a skill, which you know is always important, do click that link in the description below. And as always, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video.